Essentially, the world tree and the vision serpent, representing the king, created the center axis which communicates between the spiritual and the earthly worlds or planes. It is through ritual that the king could bring the center axis into existence in the temples and create a doorway to the spiritual world, and with it power. Sometimes the tree of life is represented, in a combination with similar concepts such as the world tree and axis mundi or world axis, by a staff such as those used by shamans. Examples of such staffs featuring coiled snakes in mythology are the Caduceus of Hermes, the Rod of Asclepius, the Staff of Moses, and the papyrus reeds and deity poles entwined by a single serpent wide jet, dating to earlier than 3000 BCE. The oldest known representation of two snakes entwined around a rod is that of the Sumerian fertility god Ninjizida, who was sometimes depicted as a serpent with a human head, eventually becoming a god of healing and magic. It is the companion of Dumuzi, Tammuz, with whom it stood at the gate of heaven. In the Louvre, there is a famous green steatite vase carved for King Didi of Lagash, dated variously 2200 to 2025 BCE, with an inscription dedicated to Ninjizida. Ninjizida was the ancestor of Gilgamesh, who, according to the epic, dived to the bottom of the waters to retrieve the plant of life. But while he rested from his labor, a serpent came and ate the plant. The snake became immortal, and Gilgamesh was destined to die. Ninjizida has been popularized in the 20th century by Raku K, Raiki, aka the Way of the Fire Dragon where Ningiz Zeta is believed to be a fire serpent of Tibetan rather than Sumerian origin. Ningiz Zeta is another name for the ancient Hindu concept Kundalini, a Sanskrit word meaning either coiled up or coiling like a snake. Kundalini refers to the mothering intelligence behind yogic awakening and spiritual maturation leading to altered states of consciousness. There are a number of other translations of the term, usually emphasizing a more serpentine nature to the word, e.g. serpent power. It has been suggested by Joseph Campbell that the symbol of snakes coiled around a staff is an ancient representation of kundalini physiology. The staff represents the spinal column, with the snakes being energy channels. In the case of two coiled snakes, they usually cross each other seven times, a possible reference to the seven energy centers called chakras. In ancient Egypt, where the earliest written cultural records exist, the serpent appears from the beginning to the end of their mythology. R.A. and Adam, he who completes or perfects, became the same god, Adam, the counter R.A., associated with earth animals, including the serpent, Nehebko, he who harnesses the souls, was the two-headed serpent deity who guarded the entrance to the underworld. He is often seen as the son of the snake goddess Renanudit. She often was confused with, and later was absorbed by, their primal snake goddess Wadjet, the Egyptian cobra, who from the earliest of records was the patron and protector of the country, all other deities, and the pharaohs. Hers is the first known oracle. She was depicted as the crown of Egypt, entwined around the staff of papyrus and the pole that indicated the status of all other deities, as well as having the all-seeing eye of wisdom and vengeance. She never lost her position in the Egyptian pantheon. The image of the serpent as the embodiment of the wisdom transmitted by Sophia was an emblem used by Gnosticism especially those sects that the more orthodox characterized as Ophites, serpent people. The Thonic Serpent was one of the earth animals associated with the cult of Mithras. The Basilisk, the venomous king of serpents with the glance that kills, was hatched by a serpent, as elders taught, from the egg of a cock. Outside Eurasia, in Yoruba mythology, Ashenmere was another mythic regenerating serpent. The Rainbow Serpent, also known as the Rainbow Snake, 
is a major mythological being for Aboriginal people across Australia. Although the creation myths associated with it are best known from Northern Australia. In Fiji, Rachamabulu was a serpent god who ruled the underworld and made fruit trees bloom. In the Northern Flinders Ranges reigns the Arkaru, a serpent who drank Lake Fromempty, refuges into the mountains, carving valleys and waterholes, earthquakes through snoring. Cosmic Serpents the serpent, when forming a ring with its tail in its mouth, is a clear and widespread symbol of the all in all, the totality of existence, infinity, and the cyclic nature of the cosmos. The most well-known version of this is the Egypto-Greek Roboros. It is believed to have been inspired by the Milky Way, as some ancient texts refer to a serpent of light residing in the heavens. The ancient Egyptians associated it with Wad Jet, one of their oldest deities, as well as another aspect, Hathor. In Norse mythology, the world serpent, or Midgard serpent, known as Jormungandr, encircled the world in the ocean's abyss, biting its own tail. Did you know Nikola Tesla became obsessed with the laws of the universe, manifestation, and the metaphysical? In Hindu mythology Lord Vishnu is said to sleep while floating on the cosmic waters on the serpent Shisha. In the Purana Shisha holds all the planets of the universe on his hoods and constantly sings the glories of Vishnu from all his mouths. He is sometimes referred to as Ananta Shisha, which means endless Shisha. In the Samudra Manthan chapter of the Puranas, Shisha loosens Mount Mandara for it to be used as a churning rod by the Azuras and Devas, to churn the ocean of milk in the heavens, in order to make Soma, or Amrita, the divine elixir of immortality. As a churning rope another giant serpent called Vasuki is used. In pre-Columbian Central America Quetzalcoatl was sometimes depicted as biting its own tail. The mother of Quetzalcoatl was the Aztec goddess Kotlaku, the one with the skirt of serpents, also known as Suacotl, the Lady of the Serpent. Quetzalcoatl's father was Mixcotl, Cloud Serpent. He was identified with the Milky Way, the stars, and the heavens in several Mesoamerican cultures. The demigod Adafido of the West African Ashanti people is also a serpent biting its own tail. In the homely mythology of Benin in West Africa, the serpent that supports everything on its many coils was named Dan. In the Vodou of Benin and Haiti, Iadoedo, aka Iadoedo, Aido Quedo, Rainbow Serpent, is a spirit of fertility, rainbows and snakes, and a companion or wife to Dan, the father of all spirits. As Vodou was exported to Haiti through the slave trade, Dan became Danbala, Dambala or Dambalawedo. Because of his association with snakes, he is sometimes disguised as Moses, who carried a snake on his staff. He is also thought by many to be the same entity of St. Patrick, known as a snake banisher. The serpent Hydra is a star constellation representing either the serpent thrown angrily into the sky by Apollo or the Lernaean Hydra as defeated by Heracles for one of his twelve labors. The constellation Serpens represents a snake being tamed by Ophiuchus the snake handler, another constellation. The most probable interpretation is that Ophiuchus represents the healer Asclepius. Serpents are often connected with dragons in various mythologies and cultural beliefs. The association between serpents and dragons can vary depending on the specific cultural context. Both serpents and dragons are often depicted as long, winding, and reptilian creatures. In many cultures, dragons are portrayed as larger and more majestic versions of serpents, possessing wings and additional mythical features. Serpents and dragons share similar symbolic meanings in many cultures. They are often associated with power, strength, wisdom, and the primal forces of nature. 
In some mythologies, both creatures are considered guardians of sacred knowledge or treasures. Dragons and serpents are frequently associated with cosmic and elemental forces. They are often connected to the elements of water and earth, and their presence is believed to influence the natural world. Many myths and legends feature serpents that transform into or are associated with dragons. These stories often involve themes of transformation, heroism, and the battle between good and evil. In some cases, the distinction between serpents and dragons might blur due to cultural syncretism. This occurs when elements from different cultures merge, leading to serpents and dragons sharing characteristics and roles. In East Asian cultures, dragons are revered creatures symbolizing power, prosperity, and good fortune. Chinese, Japanese, and Korean dragons are typically benevolent beings associated with rain, water bodies, and agricultural abundance. Their serpentine appearance links them to the serpent symbolism present in other cultures. In European mythology, dragons are often depicted as powerful and fearsome creatures, often hoarding treasures and acting as adversaries to heroic figures. They are often associated with fire, and their appearance has been influenced by various cultural influences over time, having similar symbolic functions. The venom of the serpent is thought to have a fiery quality similar to a fire-breathing dragon. The Greek Laden and the Norse Nidhogg are sometimes described as serpents and sometimes as dragons. In Germanic mythology, serpent is used interchangeably with the Greek borrowing dragon. In China, and especially in Indochina, the Indian serpent Naga was equated with the long or Chinese dragon. The Aztec and Toltec serpent god Quetzalcoatl also has dragon-like wings, like its equivalent in Kitsch Maya mythology Kukumats, feathered serpent, which had previously existed since classic Maya times as the deity named Kukulkan. In Africa the chief center of serpent worship was Dahomey, but the cult of the python seems to have been of exotic origin, dating back to the first quarter of the 17th century. By the conquest of Witta the Dahomeans were brought in contact with a people of serpent worshippers, and ended by adopting from them the beliefs which they at first despised. At Witta, the chief center, there is a serpent temple, tenanted by some fifty snakes. Every python of the Dan by kind must be treated with respect, and death is the penalty for killing one, even by accident. Dan Bai has numerous wives, who until 1857 took part in a public procession from which the profane crowd was excluded, a python was carried round the town in a hammock, perhaps as a ceremony for the expulsion of evils. The rainbow god of the Ashanti was also conceived to have the form of a snake. His messenger was said to be a small variety of boa, but only certain individuals, not the whole species were sacred. In many parts of Africa the serpent is looked upon as the incarnation of deceased relatives. Among the AMA Zulu, as among the Betsilio of Madagascar, certain species are assigned as the abode of certain classes. The Maasai, on the other hand, regard each species as the habitat of a particular family of the tribe. In ancient Mesopotamia, Nira, the messenger god of Istarin, was represented as a serpent on Kaduras, or boundary stones. Representations of two intertwined serpents are common in Sumerian art and Neo-Sumerian artwork and still appear sporadically on cylinder seals and amulets until as late as the 13th century BCE. The horn viper, Serastes Serastes, appears in Kassite and Neo-Assyrian Kaduras, and is invoked in Assyrian texts as a magical protective entity. A dragon-like creature with horns, the body and neck of a snake, the forelegs of a lion, 
and the hind legs of a bird appears in Mesopotamian art from the Akkadian period until the Hellenistic period, 323 BCE, 31 BCE. This creature, known in Akkadian as the Mu, meaning furious serpent, was used as a symbol for particular deities and also as a general protective emblem. It seems to have originally been the attendant of the underworld god Nanasu, but later became the attendant to the Hurrian storm god Tishpak, as well as, later, Nanasu's son Ninjashida, the Babylonian national god Marduk, the scribal god Nabu, and the Assyrian national god Asher. Snake cults were well established in Canaanite religion in the Bronze Age, for archaeologists have uncovered serpent cult objects in Bronze Age strata at several pre-Israelite cities in Canaan, two at Megiddo, one at Gezer, one in the Sanctum Sanctorum of the Area H Temple at Hazer, and two at Shechem. In the surrounding region, serpent cult objects figured in other cultures. A late Bronze Age Hittite shrine in northern Syria contained a bronze statue of a god holding a serpent in one hand and a staff in the other. In 6th century Babylon, a pair of bronze serpents flanked each of the four doorways of the Temple of Asajala. At the Babylonian New Year's festival, the priest was to commission from a woodworker, a metalworker, and a goldsmith two images one of which shall hold in its left hand a snake of cedar, raising its right hand to the god Nabu. At the Tell of Teep Gora, at least 17 early Bronze Age Assyrian bronze serpents were recovered. Significant finds of pottery, bronzeware, and even gold depictions of snakes have been made throughout the United Arab Emirates, UAE. The Bronze Age and Iron Age metallurgical center of Sarek al-Hadid has yielded probably the richest trove of such objects, although finds have been made bearing snake symbols in Bronze Age sites at Rumela, Bithna, and Masafi. Most of the depictions of snakes are similar, with a consistent dotted decoration applied to them. Although the widespread depiction of snakes in sites across the UAE is thought by archaeologists to have a religious purpose, this remains conjecture. Judaic Mythology In the Hebrew Bible the serpent in the Garden of Eden lured Eve with the promise of being like God, tempting her that despite God's warning, death would not be the result, that God was withholding knowledge from her. Although the serpent is identified as Satan in the book of Revelation, in Genesis the serpent is portrayed merely as a deceptive creature or trickster, promoting as good what God had directly forbidden, and particularly cunning in its deception, Genesis chapter 3. The staff of Moses transformed into a snake and then back into a staff, Exodus chapter 4. The book of Numbers chapter 21 provides an origin for an archaic copper serpent, Nehushtan, by associating it with Moses. This copper snake according to the biblical text is put on a pole and used for healing. Book of Numbers 21 9 and Moses made a snake of copper and put it upon a pole, and it came to pass, that if a snake had bitten any man, when he beheld the snake of brass, he lived. When the reformer King Hezekiah came to the throne of Judah in the late 8th century BCE, he removed the high places, broke the sacred pillars, smashed the idols, and broke into pieces the copper snake that Moses had made, for unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. Christian Mythology In the Gospel of John chapter 3, verse 14 to 15, Jesus makes direct comparison between the raising up of the Son of Man and the act of Moses in raising up the serpent as a sign, using it as a symbol associated with salvation. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Muslim Mythology the serpent is a recurrent motif in Islamic thought, 
appearing in both sacred texts representing evil and works of art. The creature is often seen as a symbol of evil and punishment. The serpent is a complex figure in Islamic thought, appearing as both a symbol of evil and a figure of wisdom. The creature provides a reminder of the dangers of temptation. Serpents are sacred and powerful in the thought of prehistoric cultures of Iran, having been portrayed as patrons of fertility, water and wealth in the ancient objects of Iran. They seem to have been worshipped along with the fertility goddesses from the 4th to 1st millennia BC, when their presence as mighty patrons and source of life and of immortality is seen in the art of Tal Ibakun, Chogamish, Teep Sayalk, Giraffe culture, Shari Supte, Shah, Elamite art, Luristan art, etc. However, it seems that the symbolic concept of the serpent was corrupted in the cultures of the Iranian plateau over time by Western influence. In Abrahamic traditions, the serpent represents sexual desire, as he lured Eve with the promise of forbidden knowledge in the Garden of Eden. As a result of such influence, Aryan religions call the serpents diabolic, Aji Dahaki in the Avesta is a scary serpent, and Zahak in the Shahnameh is an infernal creature with two snakes on his shoulders. This replacement might be due to communication between the inhabitants of Iran and believers in Abrahamic religions, and beyond that the conversion of matriarchy into patriarchy as the social structure of Iranian plateau cultures. In Chinese creationism mythology, Nua is the mother goddess who created humans from clay. She is depicted as a half-snake being. Greek Mythology The Minoan snake goddess brandished a serpent in either hand, perhaps evoking her role as source of wisdom, rather than her role as mistress of the animals, Potnia Theron, with a leopard under each arm. Serpents figured prominently in archaic Greek myths. According to some sources, a serpent, Aphion, aka Aphionius, ruled the world with Eurynome before the two of them were cast down by Cronus and Rhea. The oracles of the ancient Greeks were said to have been the continuation of the tradition begun with the worship of the Egyptian cobra goddess Wadjet. Typhon, the enemy of the Olympian gods, is described as a vast grisly monster with a hundred heads and a hundred serpents issuing from his thighs who was conquered and cast into Tartarus by Zeus, or confined beneath volcanic regions, where he is the cause of eruptions. Typhon is thus the thonic figuration of volcanic forces. Serpent elements figure among his offspring, among his children by Echidna are Cerberus, a monstrous three-headed dog with a snake for a tail and a serpentine mane, the serpent-tailed Chimera, the serpent-like thonic water beast Lernaean Hydra, and the hundred-headed serpentine dragon Laden. Both the Lernaean Hydra and Laden were slain by Heracles. A history of the caduceus symbol in medicine 1992 collected hundreds of examples of the caduceus and the rod of asclepius and found that professional associations were just somewhat more likely to use the staff of asclepius while commercial organizations in the medical field were more likely to use the caduceus following the christian context as a symbol for evil serpents are sometimes featured in political propaganda they were used to represent Jews in anti-Semitic propaganda. Snakes were also used to represent the evil side of drugs in such films as Narcotic, 